I want to begin with this project. Hmm? Why did you choose this project? Because I have never been in Canada, and I wanted to go one day to Canada, but I need a professional reason. I'm not a tourist. I hate to be a tourist. I feel like an idiot if I'm a tourist. I did so many houses for myself that I can hardly add any, because I even had houses where I never spent one day. Uh, and I like interior design, but not for other private people. So I thought this idea was quite funny because, you know, it's not the first time I do that. I did a similar thing in Taiwan and I'm doing a huge hotel in uh, Macau where I do all the rooms, everything. Huh? But in uh, Taiwan I do the same thing here, the only one apartment and, you, you know, to show people how it could be, yeah? and the, the lobby. Huh? And also uh, there I did the facade to the whole building. And what's Be different about this kind of design, architecture, interior design, from what you're... You know, it's different and it's not different because the technique is completely different. But as I was always interested in architecture, uh, design and all that, for me it's something very personal at the same time like fashion. Huh? I don't have to think that it's something I have never done or what it's an unknown kind of thing for me. No, I feel very at ease with it and I have an instant vision of what I could do, should do and would do. Maybe it sounds potential, but uh, for me it's a project I can easily identify with. Huh? And to put your name on it, you must trust that it will be a quality project. Yes, but I mean, uh, I put my name on things I like, so I, I, I don't have to hide my name. It's not some oral project. I mean, they have the, the possibility to, to make something beautiful, so why not? Um, uh, huh? My idea, what I think they should do, because in my own eyes and for my own standards, good enough that I can put my name on it. I don't do jobs where I, my name could not appear, which I never do. And you, as you say, it's all the same process. Yeah. What is that? What is that thing, creativity, to you that is the same from photography to fashion to architecture? Very difficult to explain because nobody else really does it the same way. Yeah? So I don't know. It happened one after the other and it melted all together and became something uh, what helps me for everything. One helps the other. It's a very strange thing. I cannot and I don't want to analyze too much. Yeah? Are you ever insecure about your creativity? What? Ever uncertain that you will be able to produce no, the kind of work no, you want? No, no. We are very much to burn out and those stuff today. You know, I have a position in life in terms of work, what is so pleasant that it's very difficult to be that difficult and thinking that's too much. I have great people working with me, unbelievable teams, some people who for 30, 40 years worked with me had never worked for somebody else. So this is like some Swiss watch, you see. Huh? So I, I, I don't even... What you ask me is even a question that doesn't enter my mind. You're never afraid? I hope so. No, I, I never noticed. Perhaps I did, but I, I never noticed myself. Have you ever um, designed anything, produced anything that you weren't proud of, that you were less than thrilled with, that you would do differently next time? Maybe, maybe it happened, but I made such an effort to forget this kind of thing that I don't remember. You I'm very good about forgetting. Forgetting is good, and I think you've, you're definitely on the record saying you want to look forward. Exactly. You know, in fashion what I like is next step, next step, six months, six months, six months. Huh? Now it's even three months because there are so many collections with the crews and the Metier Diet, Chanel and all that. But I think it's a healthy way of doing for people like me. If the others think it's too much for their creativity, that's their problem, that's not mine. So is it really invention that you do? If it's the next thing, if it's always forward? Yes, yes. I'm never pleased with what I did. I always hope that I can do better, that the next time it will be better. Uh, I consider myself lazy. I mean, grotesque. It's ridiculous. But thank God I'm like this. Huh? And yet, at this point, it's impossible almost not to look back at what you've done and what you've achieved. And yeah, but I don't think about that. Huh? For me, I'm always the beginner. The next collection is always the first. The sketch I make is always the first. You know. The, uh, I don't work that way, huh? and one shouldn't work that way, I think. So what is the starting point for you? When you design, is yeah. there a moment, is it a sketch? What's the moment that begins that creative process? It sometimes it's sometimes it's very different, because there are no rules either, you know. Sometimes I have idea in the oddest places, and then I have to run to find a paper to put the idea on the paper, because I, I can forget it. That's a very strange thing, you know, uh, uh, and it should stay a strange thing, because it's not a recipe. There are no rules for this kind of thing. People can't learn from what Karl Lagerfeld does. No.
You have to be my type to learn from me. Thank you, everyone, and Carl, thank you so much. We are so, so thrilled to have you here. And I'm happy to be here, and you know, I would do everything for you if you asked me something, because you did such a lot of things for me. Well, thank you, Carl. Carl has, was scheduled to come when this, during the first go-round, and he now interrupted his preparation for Couture, which is less than two weeks away. So we are really, really grateful. But you know, there are traveling collect, uh, conditions and traveling conditions, so it's not that difficult. <laughs> Carl, I know you're not one to revel in past, in past it's work. Not my own past. Other people's past, what I don't have known or what I don't know, is interesting. I'm not really interested in my own past because I know everything about it. <laughs> well, one thing you know then that this year yourself, you, you will mark, if not celebrate, your 30th anniversary at Chanel. You've been longer at Fendi. Recently, we have seen a number of changes at the creative helm of, of houses. What makes for a successful designer house relationship? You know. Some people say I'm a hired gun and I'm very flattered to be one because, you know, the label is there. And Mrs. Mengels made recently a very interesting uh, article about it in the New York Times. The label is there before and has to be after. It's not a star system of one person for a certain number of years and then who knows. I think the important thing is you have to be behind the label and not use the label of something what pushes your fame, your I don't know what. I mean, I cannot cross the streets, but uh, Chanel did also a lot to help me to make Chanel what it is now, because when I took over, everybody said to me, even the people from the business, don't touch it, it's dead. Because this idea of revive companies is a recent idea. Tom Ford with Gucci came later, and I don't talk about all the rest. But then everybody said, don't touch it. And Mr. Werthammer said, you can do whatever you want. So I did, and apparently it worked, because I'm good when the work conditions are perfect. People who don't make an effort and think they're not better, they get less. It's very strange, but the best get the best. What were the conditions? Chanel was doing very badly when you went in. You know, you 10 or 11 years after her death, it was a sleeping beauty who had uh, only one idea, respect. The good thing about Chanel is that her whole life and things was not that flawless, yet you have to be that respectful. It's only interesting and exciting other side, that's about fashion, because the only homage is really something you get nowhere. That is boredom incarnated. So how do you balance the two, staying true to, to the Chanel identity that you at this point have, have nurtured and created, and, and with the proper amount of irreverence to make it modern? You know, you have to have your eyes open. And you know, it's easy to make Chanel in something fashionable for every period. First of all, there are so many elements, and in the way, my job is also to make believe that very Chanel, what she never did and what was never done. It's like a game, and maybe I'm not too bad a gambler. What can there be to be learned? What is there to be learned from your relationship with Mr. Wertheimer? No, without that, uh, it wouldn't exist. Uh, he never interferes. I have nothing to do with the perfume that, but in our world, the fashion, we do what we think is right. Me, Bruno Palowski. Virginie, who is the creative uh, studio director of everything. We don't make meetings, we don't talk about marketing. Maybe they have marketing people, I never saw them, I don't know. We, I, I never go into a meeting in, 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 in 31 years, because in fact 30 years is not true, it's 31. Because the collection was in January uh, 83. Yeah, to do a collection, you don't start a week before. So in fact, it started already mm -hmm. in, uh, in May uh, 82. But as I'm not into anniversary, I will not be touchy about that subject. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Carl. Your work ethic is legendary. What drives you? you know, if you accept a job, it's something about it's not your own business, or you do it decently, or you forget about it. And also, you know, doing for doing is the most exciting thing in life. Doing for having done or to continue is very, very boring. I think I'm beyond lucky. I can do whatever I want in the most perfect condition, and it works. In a moment in the world, where not so many things are working that well. So, I mean, I'm very lucky, and I hope uh, that reflects in my work. I mean, you know, th that makes a lot, you know, work conditions are important. And, uh, you know, I don't want to run a company myself. I have nothing against business. My father was a businessman, but I like the creative freedom. I don't even think this will sell, this will not sell. I listen to my inner voices, like a French uh, uh, male version of the Joan of Arc, and then, <laughs> then I do what I think is right for the moment and the circumstances. Huh? You said that you don't do meetings, you don't, care, you don't get involved in the marketing. 
but you make no bones about being a commercial designer. Do you think about what, what will, how things will sell or performance when you're, when you're designing? No, no, thanks God not, because then it becomes uh, marketing. No, I don't think about it, but I hope it will, but I don't formulate this. Uh, no, I think that's a very unhealthy thing, because when I say, or you say, and I say too, I'm a commercial designer, you know, uh, as Kerry Donovan used to say, fashion is what people wear. And I think that has not changed. Huh? I'm happy that so many people in the world uh, like Chanel. And the other day, the owner of another big group asked me, you have permanent sales at Chanel. I said, why? Because the shops are so crowded all the time. <laughs> they really are. They, they certainly are. I think we are pretty lucky. Huh? Well, and also... And it may say that I do the right thing. Somebody may do better, but I don't know who for them. Can you articulate why it works? You have, <laughs> you have done something that so many people have tried and really been unable to do. You have cross-generational appeal. You've, whether, you know, real women, there are young girls who want that first Chanel jacket, young actresses who can't wait to wear Chanel on the red carpet. How have you met, but you haven't lost the core of, you know, the, the, the lady who really has the money to buy Chanel. How do you do that? That is a mystery I don't try to analyze because it's very <laughs> unhealthy. You know, I'm working like this. I'm not such a serious person, you see. <laughs> I don't ask too many questions. I try to give kind of right answers. See, very pretentious to say. <laughs> I, I don't listen to my voice. I listen to my inspiration. And what inspires you? Everything. I'm what people call a voyeur. I look at everything, remember everything, and can redo things my way. Because a bad idea of somebody else can give you a good idea. It depends, you know, it's a very vicious system. One cannot analyze in five seconds. What? I'm um, like an antenna, you know, like a building with an antenna who captures everything. I want to know everything. I read every magazine. I want to be informed. Uh, I think uh, that is exciting about fashion. Look, in the past, you look at paintings from whatever century. You can only date them by the clothes. That means fashion is important. Are there artists you're particularly interested in right now? Artists? Artists you're particularly interested in right now? Artists in, uh, in fashion or in... No, artists in... Canada. Favorite. My favorite is uh, Jeff Kuhn. So I... Why? Because I think that the right spirit of our times, I like what he does, this, the spirit, the proportion, the person, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, when I like something, I don't ask myself why. I only like it. What are you reading now? You know, as I speak three languages, more or less. Well. <laughs> oh, I think you do. Yeah. No, no, no. But I mean, you know, I have a strange way of speaking because my drama, my French are strange too. But that's my way of speaking. Uh, and I'm a publisher too, so I read a lot of books because I have two publishing operations in Germany with Gerhard Steidl, one for reading books and one for photo books. So I read everything what's new in English, what's new in French, what's new in German. That not much. And. Uh, <laughs> And for the moment, I was reading on the plate, I was reading Back to Blood, the Tom, what's his name? Tom, the, the, the one with the white suit. Do you, um, the photography? Yeah. Is there, are there any, you, you photograph other people's clothes, you're happy to photograph fashion, you do, you do portraiture. Is there any, are there any subjects or genres that do not interest you? No, you don't ever wear, uh, know where good photography is. I love to do architecture. Huh? That is one of my favorite things. But I think it's interesting for a designer to do photos, and more and more designers do that, because if not, you're isolated after the collection in your studio. Doing uh, photography, taking photos, doing advertising, you are going ahead to meet uh, uh, with other people is a whole thing. You are not isolated, because I think the worst thing in fashion, and that was very couture in the past in France, is the ivory tower. You know, that is like a cemetery. I'm very much against it. What's the role of couture today? What? The role of couture today. You know, somebody, you know, I will not mention, uh, said couture was dead when somebody closed it. <laughs> Apparently, it's not really true. Because in fact, there are more clients for couture than 20 years ago. Clients look like models. They could buy ready to wear and buy ready to wear because some of the ready to wear has the prices of couture in the past. Uh, most of the Chanel suits in the shops, even to change the money, are as expensive as the couture things uh, from 40 or 50 years ago. Uh, there are so many new worlds and so much new money that they are interested in that because they discover it. And I think couture has a real reason to exist in a limited thing like Chanel or, or Dior, because they have a real couture house organization. Small designers who have not the real organization would do expensive ready-to-wear, because couture, it's not only the dresses made by order, it's also the presentation, the, the fittings, the, the whole thing, what goes with it. There is something 
mythical about it, what cannot be improvised. You can make very good clothes at home on a limited uh, scale, but a real couture operation, I mean, there are very few left. Huh? Mm -hmm. So there, there are, you have more clients at Chanel than 20 years ago? Yes, I think so. Are, there, are, are, are they mostly in what are newer markets? Some of them are not, not necessarily new anymore. Are there, are there remain, is there remaining significant you know, today, base in the West? Today, in the past, people came even from South America, with elegant women from the 20s and 30s, like Madame Martinez de Rose and all that. They came to Paris, spent a few months for their fittings, their dresses. Today, you know, the private jets are full of premier going to fit the dresses all around the world. Mm -hmm. In a salon, most of the clients don't even see the collection. The collection goes to the country. The collection is shown to the woman. They make a, on the video a vague choice, and then the premier and the sales lady goes with the plane of those people to show the dresses. That's another word that didn't exist in the past, because private jets and things like this uh, didn't exist. And, Many of the rich people of the past are poor people compared to the richness of today. I'm sorry. <laughs> You've also taken various ready-to-wear collections, not the, not the major spring and fall, but the free collections and the, um, the special collections around. You, you just did a big show in Scotland. How important is it, do you think, to take, to go, out, to leave Paris for shows? What, what was the appeal of the Carl concept? The graphic idea of what I like, what could be translated for me to girls, Mm. It's a very graphic black and white and silver and grey uh, universe. You know, Chanel is me doing Chanel, right. Fendi is me doing uh, Italian, Italy, mm. and this is me doing me whatever it means. Huh? Right. So don't ask me too many questions because, <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's very strange to see your face wherever you turn your head. Huh? This collection, the car collection, is just going to be available online. Yes, it's what I like. You know, I wanted that for a long time because the people I were in business before, they always thought they could be in competition with Chanel or Fendi was LVMH. Or you would put billions right. you know, or you forget about it. Right. Huh? And I was not interested. I was not interested in doing three times the same thing. I like to do since I did H&M that point and that point. Right. The middle has not enough class that I think about the middle class. Right. Hmm? And who's the, who's the customer? Who do you see buying the Carl collection? I never want to think about customers. <laughs> there is another department. For, I'm not a marketing right. person. I just do collections. Mm -hmm. Then it's up to them to run with it. Mm -hmm. huh? Wherever they run, whatever direction they take, I hope it's the right direction. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe it's a good thing to say, I design for this kind of right, woman. Right. There was once a French designer, I don't mention the name, I can tell you privately, who said, my dresses are only bought by clever women. You know, she went out of business. There you so go. propose something what in the air, never say, this is for you and right. this is not for you. Right. I think it's very pretentious. I'm what the French people call grand public. So uh, if there is a name of the big companies with the tradition and the culture of that, like Fendi and especially Chanel, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But if it's my name alone, alone I'm different. Right. I started at, ba at Balmain and then I was at Patou. Mm -hmm. All these houses are free now, you can do the collections if you want. Okay. But uh, Balmain, I wasn't crazy for what they did and he was not very pleasant. Huh? But I told myself, you're here to learn, shut up and forget right. about it. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Schicke at Dior and Balenciaga, but I was there. And you can learn in a good place because you are not influenced. You learn what not to do. Right. And exactly. I'm not a businessman. There are people who are good on that. Why should I do that? Huh? That bores me to death. Huh? And that's how you always operate. Always, since, always. Since Business since is not for me. I'm too stupid for that. Huh? Or too shrewd, it depends how you look. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but I don't want to show that side. And <laughs> it bores me, you know. Huh? Yeah. I want to have a free spirit yeah. and a kind of liberty without going down to earth. Huh? Right. I'm not a showroom person. I like the vision, the idea, but reality I don't want to know too much about. In the world of luxury goods, both France and Germany boast no figure that comes quite as close to a living national icon as Karl Lagerfeld. He is best known as head designer and creative director for both the House of Chanel and the Italian fashion brand Fendi, and he enjoys great success with his own Karl Lagerfeld label. Born in Hamburg, he has been a fixture on the Paris fashion scene for over 50 years. If ever two nations had a private sector soft power asset at the center of the creative industries, it's the man in the skinny denim, frockish coat, pulled back hair, and sunglasses. I met with Mr. Lagerfeld in Paris at his bookstore, Come Atelier, Come Photo Studio, to discuss everything from fine print, politics, and creative control. In 89, 90, I think what we might have, what might have met, uh, we were in a period of five or six sort of singular women, um, many fashion houses, uh, not attached to big corporates. 
Is there a different, a different sense of, of doing business, a different sense of marketing uh, then versus now, or, or do you think? Marketing is a word I never use because I don't even know what that means. Huh? Of course, let's forget about it. I don't have to do that. Huh? Uh, Lucky you. Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, I think about what I want to do. I think I found a good solution. I don't discuss it with marketing people. Huh? I do it. Huh? because if not, forget about it. Huh? No, it's, it's another world, you know, in, in 25 years, the world has changed unbelievable. Stupid things like the, the iPad and the, and, and the iPhone, already that changed the world too. And the internet and all, the, 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 all those things, I mean, the world is so different. Uh, people connect in such a different way. The business is also, look, Amazon, all those things didn't exist, so you can not compare anymore. For me, it's like it happened 50 or 100 years ago. It's interesting that you maybe refer to them in, in a slightly dismissive way. And in a way, I applaud this as well. You recently brought out uh, a newspaper, which was interesting to see. A provocation, uh, just to say, listen, there are many ways to consume media. There's many ways to advertise and promote. Or I love paper. I love newspapers. I think it was fun to do. It was not done like this before. Uh, you know, I worked uh, for one day with papers like Metro, what's, 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 like mine for, or I did Liberation, I did Welt am Sonntag. I like that. So why shouldn't I do, not do it one day for myself? Does that maybe reflect also what your breakfast diet looks like? Are you a Frankfurter Allgemeine Neue Zürcher Zeitung, yeah. Le Monde, uh, yes, New York yeah, yeah, Times? No, you don't have the Monde for the breakfast. It comes out at, at lunchtime. If you have the Monde for breakfast, it's an old magazine or oh, paper. It's from the day before. Huh? It, it's the only uh, noon paper. Huh? But it's a good thing because very often they have things the other don't have because they finish before midnight. Huh? So in the, no, I love daily papers. I mean, uh, some of them have problems because they're not well written. I think the survival of daily papers depends a lot on the way people write. There are not many great, what they used to call feathers, huh? plume. And that makes it more banal. Because the language on, on the digital and all this is another thing. That is information. But on a paper, you want to sit down, read, and read something was pleasant to read. Mm. Just flat information, you can get that somewhere else. They have to make a bigger effort. It's interesting listening to the press barons. They're always blaming it's digital's fault. It's no, the fault it's their fault also, you know, if they were geniuses with a new modern way to write like it used to happen in the past, but that doesn't exist. Mm. Right? It's easily pretentious and uh, it's not much better than the information on the digital. I'm sorry. So then I understand that there are problems. It's very interesting to look at Die Zeit right now, a newspaper which is actually growing. Uh, everyone says a print is dead. Yes, but also the level is better. Of course, I absolutely. mean, uh, uh, the Zeit I read, I love the Zeit. Huh? Zeit magazine sometimes is a little too pretentious for me. Huh? I prefer the magazine from the Frankfurt uh, once a month. You know, they did eight times a month in the first year, not because of my cartoons, huh? my caricature. Now, from next year, they're doing so well, they do every month. But what's in the DNA, do you think, in, in the German market that they've been able to sustain this? I think it's also the fact that there are many different cities. It's not only one big city and the rest is Sleeping Beauty. I think there is something more complicated and more uh, diversified in Germany than in other countries. Because it's polycentric? Yes. The power is not just sitting in Berlin, yes, it's exactly. not just... No, no, Berlin, no. What is, what is your take on Berlin? But you know, Berlin could be great, but for me, Berlin is a, like a human body with an arm and a leg missing. What they did there, the Russians, made it forever something what has not the soul Berlin was famous for. It's okay, they want to be trendy, they want to be so trendy that they look sometimes like a second grade London. Uh, that's not that easy. Uh, for me, I know so well the past of Berlin and the spirit of Berlin and the whole thing that the Berlin from today, I don't know. For me, there is not enough left from what Berlin was all about. Mm -hmm. The spirit of Berlin, there was a way, you know, there was a tournoi d'esprit, you know, Somebody who was typical for that, in a way, was Helmut Newton. He had this kind of genius. Huh? When you look at the state of, of where media um, is today, um, digital media, are you slightly saddened by the fact that there's almost this demystification? I mean, good brands, I always think, are quite mysterious. But yet today, everyone's talking every second about what they're doing. You look, you look at a major CEO, he's telling you about who his next designer is, uh, how happy everyone is in the factory. Do you think that this somehow sort of diminishes the very industry that we're, we're talking you know, about? 
information became so easy that we are over informed by things we are not supposed to know who are not that uh, great to know but that is something what never existed before so it is too dangerous to say no it was better before. it wasn't better it was just different it's up to us to adjust to our time times are not supposed to adjust to our perhaps passe is taste so you have to be careful you like it or you don't like it the question is that's the way it is you can do nothing against it that's an evolution uh, and that evolution cannot be stopped and will not be stopped tomorrow morning I wonder if there's a certain boredom as well when you look at major fashion corporations I mean, you think back to some of the great people that you worked with as partners before versus we're in this era of private equity so many companies are on the stock exchange now is there a similar rush today as there was when you put out a collection 30 years ago i don't even compare 30 years ago with now huh? no it's all you know the word globalization didn't exist 30 years ago oh it's all on a global scale it has to be on the stock market it has to be you know uh, people companies i work for they have hundreds and hundreds of shops all over the world the whole thing so that was not like this before so you cannot criticize the world because you think it's better before and be part of that world what is all over the place for me it's okay i must be an opportunist i can still live in my private world but i'm not against the world of today because if you are against it you are like don quixote i don't fight windmills and in this globalized world is a city like the one we're in paris is it important not just as a center for creativity but also as a center for making things even it depends for what kind of uh, label you are working uh, what chanel does uh, they produce in france this kind of thing in france they do it pretty well but uh, for less expensive thing the people ask for so much money that they would make things nobody would pay that much if they would be made here so you think provenance is still important when you're talking about a, a label like chanel made in france is is still key or, or made in italy yes made in italy in italy they are pretty good huh? and some of the things are made in the shoes uh, for chanel are made in italy because in france there's nobody left for the shoes and today perfect labor is expensive beautiful craftsmanship like they can do here in terms of embroidery and things like this are expensive but not everybody can pay that so some people uh, are happy to get something with some glitter on it made in india i hope not by children huh? if you look at austria still a little bit of switzerland germany y- you still have this culture of the apprentice people yeah. do apprenticeships we've sort of lost this um you have to have a degree you have to go to university the idea of doing something with your hands has kind of gone but yeah you, you still get this practicant culture in in germany i mean being a carpenter if you do beautiful work there is something to be proud of it's like the, the medieval corporations from 6 700 years ago maybe uh, there is something left in the mind of the people do you think there are not enough of the younger designers called that none of them seem to sketch they're all on the computers yeah but you know today is very different but about uh, some of the younger designers are not that young and also you know they are art directors i'm not an art director uh, so they have people and then they make a choice in it and then they go out after the show and make believe they did it all it is the way every studio is organized today but not mine and Carl, are there a particular designers uh, that you uh, that you think are very good yeah many who are some of your favorites i like mitra prada because i think she's the anna magnani of italian fashion yes and uh, in france there are several people i like because you know it's also difficult to say because i'm friendly with so i don't really know their clothes i like uh, ricardo tisci from givenchy a lot uh, i like the girl who does chloe what i did for over 20 years i like uh, bibi from uh, celine no no there are many people i like i like uh, comme les garçons even if it's not wearable in the classic sense but i think there is a spirit uh, thing like this huh? what i don't like is a designer who are fake intellectuals who call themselves we are very intellectual no no dressmaking is dressmaking philosophy is philosophy but you don't have to mix it you think sometimes they take themselves too seriously themselves. beyond beyond and i don't give you names because it wouldn't be nice i couldn't care less <gasps> there are none that you can actually name carl no no because uh, <laughs> i don't want to but the list is not that short
But I was isolated from the country. Yeah. La mort je ne savais pas qu'on en pouvait en faire un métier. Euh, dans mon enfance, la mort c'était un truc de fournisseur. L'école ne bascule pas en arrière. Il est difficile de, de, de décrire comment on imagine le monde quand on a 7, 8, 10 ans. Hein. Mais j'étais persuadé que ça marcherait et que je serais connu dans le monde entier. Je suis né au bord de l'Elbe. J'adorais dans le brouillard, la nuit, quand j'étais enfant dans mon lit, les bateaux qui partaient vers la mer du Nord et avec les sirènes et tout. Et ça donne un sentiment très... Euh, euh, particulier. C'est très mélancolique, mais c'est très, 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 très fort comme, comme sentiment. Mais il faut du brouillard et des sirènes comme ça. Hein. Sinon, ça ne marche pas. Hein. Mes parents n'étaient presque jamais là. Je, personne ne m'a merdé. Mais j'ai passé ma vie à lire, à apprendre des langues et à dessiner. Donc, euh, mon temps était entièrement rempli. Mais à ma façon, je détestais les enfants. Je ne jouais pas avec les enfants. Je n'ai jamais eu de jouets. Je ne voulais que des blocs, des crayons et des livres. Je n'ai jamais voulu autre chose dans la vie. Et ça n'a pas changé, c'est pareil aujourd'hui. Là, tu mets un clip à la base du col officier, presque à l'épaule. Ben, c'est très bien. Tu mets un clip là, chérie, sur la base du col. Moi, j'étais relativement vif, je suppose, et enchanté de ma personne. Aujourd'hui, je suis timide et modeste. Hmm? J'avais une tête comme ça. Je suis parti pour plusieurs raisons. D'abord, ma mère disait, oh, c'est les portes pour le monde, mais ce n'est que les portes dehors. Bon, je ne voyais pas ce que je pouvais faire. Je n'allais pas reprendre les affaires de mon père. Pour bon, c'est bien. J'adore l'idée, ce que ça représente, le passé et tout. Mais ce n'est pas pour moi. Si vous avez eu la, la nostalgie, oh, il faut que je rentre à la maison. Non, je n'ai pas ça d'avoir la maison. Ça ne veut rien dire de mon cas parce que je n'ai pas de famille. Et dans la mode, on n'est pas dans le futur. On peut faire mes boutiques. Hein. Non, c'est d'une horreur. Et puis, moi, je n'ai pas d'archives. Hein. Chanel et Fendi, ils ont des archives. Moi, je n'ai rien. Ça ne m'intéresse même pas. Parce que ce que j'aime, c'est faire. Bon, mais c'est l'idée que m'en fait. Ça n'a aucun rapport avec la réalité. Peut-être que la réalité, je ne la connais plus. Hein. J'ai toujours été relativement libre. Hein. Évidemment, je n'ai pas à me poser la question, t'as loupé ton truc, t'as pas pu faire ce que je voulais et tout. J'en ai connu assez de mille enfants qui disent oui, mais j'ai pas pu faire ce que je voulais, tu comprends, je me suis marié. Mais, je... mais dans ce cas-là, il fallait pas se marier. Je ne suis pas totalement content de moi, mais au moins, j'ai fait ce que je voulais faire. Ça s'est accentué avec les années et dans tous les sens du mot. Je suis libre parce que je dépends de personne. Il y a des gens qui croient que ça ferme là beaucoup de